Hola amigos. If you have been following these tutorials along, you already have a couple of ready-to-go materials, and you might be wondering, how can I get those in my game? So, in today's video, we'll see two different ways of achieving that. One will work in any engine, while the other one is specific to Unreal. Also, for these examples, I'll be using this computer board material that I made, and which you can download for free using the links in the description. The most common way of exporting materials is as a set of image files. Each one corresponds to one of our outputs – base color, roughness, metallic, and so on. Later on, we can import these images as textures in any engine, and use them as part of any of its rendered features. To export a material, click on the Tools button on the top, and select Export Outputs to open the Options panel. Starting from the top, the first parameter is the destination folder. I usually pick a different location than the source assets. The next is the image format. Make sure that you choose one co that is compatible with your engine. For this example, I'll use PNG. After that, we have the name pattern. The default value will use the graph name followed by the output. In the preview below, we can see that it will name the first output computer board base color. After that, we have the outputs list. You can disable or enable specific maps according to your needs. The All and Known buttons will check or uncheck all outputs respectively. Finally, you can check the option at the bottom to automatically export any output after it changes in the graph. This can be especially useful if your pipeline allows live texture updates in runtime. Once all the options are set, we can click the Export button and close this dialog. Substance will run this process in the background, allowing us to continue working in the meantime. The texture resolution at which these are going to be exported can be set individually, but in most cases it will be inherited from the parent. To be sure, you can check the output values which are displayed under each node. And remember that you can identify which nodes are outputs by the cube icon on their top left corner. And here we have our 7 PNG images, ready to be dropped in the engine. There are links to download them in the description. And now, we can jump into Unreal and see how to put all this into use. The first step is going to be to add the images to our content folder. In other engines, this is done by copying the images to an included folder in the project path. However, in Unreal we can directly drag and drop them into the content drawer, where they will show up in a second. Unreal will also detect that one of them is a normal map and change the import options accordingly. Next, we're going to create a new material, name it and open the editor. We're going to need to add a bunch of texture samplers, so let's go one by one. In Unreal, you can directly drag the texture from the content drawer to create a sampler with it already selected. The next few steps are quite straightforward. Each texture connects to their matching input on the material. For base color and normal, we'll connect the RGB output, but for the rest, any of those three will be enough, since they are grayscale values. Once you get to the opacity input, you will realize that not all shader types support all channels. In Unreal, we can change this by selecting the material node and switching the blend mode to any of the modes that support transparency. For this example, I'll set it to masked and connect the opacity texture to the mask input on the material. And now we can add the remaining maps but we'll leave hide for the last, since this is a special case. To use a displacement map, you probably will need a very dense mesh, 
or an engine that supports dynamic tessellation, which is no longer the case for Unreal 5. In those cases, we can use the height map as displacement. To do so, multiply the height map by the vertex normal and optionally an integer to scale the effect. If you're using Unreal 4 or earlier, you can copy the layout that I have here. Here you can see the issue. Without tessellation, this mesh doesn't have enough polygons to show all the detail from the high resolution height map. The workaround is to use this texture in a separate 3D modeling package and create that mesh with that detail. Unreal 5 has a simple mesh editor that can make that for us. To access it though, you will need to enable a couple plugins in the engine. Modeling tools editor mode and static mesh editor modeling mode. After a quick restart, the editor modes will be listed on the top left drop-down menu. Now, with the mesh selected, click on the displace button from the deform group. On displacement type, select texture 2D map and pick up the height map. Next, Increase the displacement intensity and the number of subdivisions. This is not a very efficient way of doing this, but will work as an example. And don't forget to ac accept the changes using the button at the bottom center to save the mesh. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there was a second way to import substance materials that was exclusive to Unreal, and I was completely wrong. The Substance plugin is also available for Unity and CryEngine, as well as a large number of 3D editors. These plugins need compiled versions of the Substance materials, so we have to save them as SBSAR files. You can do so by right-clicking on any graph on the Explorer panel and selecting Publish SBSAR file. I'm also including this file as a free download in the description below. The Substance plugin can be downloaded from the Unity, Unreal or CryEngine marketplaces. Once installed and enabled in your project, you can add SVSAR files just like any other supported type. Let's bring this one into the engine and see how it works. When you import a substance material, you will get one of these dialogues for each one of the graphs. With the default options, Unreal will create one instance and one material per graph. The options in the center allow changing the material template used. Each template has different options, but we can use the standard one for now. I'm also going to skip all the graphs except for the main one to keep things a bit simpler. After all the importing is done, we have a Substance Graph instance, one texture per output on the graph, and a Material instance. Double-click on the first one to open the Substance settings. Here you can see the main benefit of using the plugin instead of exported textures. We can change any exposed parameters in the graph without re-exporting it. By default, only the random seed and resolution are available but we'll see how to add our custom parameters in a future video. You can even enable runtime modifications and update those via C Sharp scripts. The material instance, on the other hand, has options to control the mapping and other parameters of the shader. The default template is very simple, but you can create your own if you need to achieve a custom effect. For now, I'll just increase the tiling and end this video here.
Today was a short one, but I still appreciate it if you watch it. Hope it was helpful and stay tuned for the next one.